Welcome to part two of our never-ending lecture on electronic structure and bonding. I'm Dr. Mike Christiansen, and today I'm going to teach you about electronic structure and bonding. <laughs> now, as I ponder this subject, it reminds me of a time when I sang for a high school performing choir as a high tenor. Ah! While singing an epic song with our large choir one day, I eagerly awaited an upcoming part when we tenors got the chance to belt out a really long and sustained note. It just so happened, however, that at that time, I also really had to belch. So what could I do? Well, in my adolescent immaturity, I reasoned that I should just do both things at the same time. Thus, when the time arrived for us tenors to belt out that note, I instead released a loud and vibrant belch, which I stopped perfectly when the conductor cut us off at the end of the sustained note. Bob Christensen, my conductor, was furious. Who did that, he said, looking around in the tenor section. It was me, I proudly exclaimed. Mike, Mr. Christensen exclaimed. Bob, I replied. Get out of here, he yelled. I was expelled for the rest of the day. <laughs> and as you might have surmised from the story, I was a defiant little turd in high school. That notwithstanding, I still managed to become a successful chemistry professor. So yes, there is hope for all of us, even for those of us who suck. Before vaulting into today's material, then, let's take a look at the things that you should be able to do after this lecture is done. 1. Sort bonds by strength and length. And 2. Identify any atom's hybridization and explain in terms of atomic and molecular orbitals what that actually means. So here's that information, or if I were saying it in Spanish, aquí está la información. In the wondrous mental colonoscopy that is the world of covalent bonding and orbital overlap, you must know the following. In any molecule, each single bond in the molecule is called a sigma bond. All double bonds contain one sigma and one pi bond, and triple bonds all contain one sigma and two pi bonds. This is illustrated by the following example, supplied by my amazing staff that consists both of myself and a plush Darth Vader desk toy sitting in my office. This molecule, CH4, is also known as methane, which <laughs> incidentally is the most politically disconcerting ingredient found in cow flatulence. As you can see, this molecule, methane, has four carbon-hydrogen single bonds, which means that it has four sigma bonds. This molecule, formaldehyde, was once used as an embalming agent. As you should be able to surmise, the carbon-oxygen double bond, because it is a double bond, contains one sigma and one pi bond, while each CH single bond is a single bond, and therefore is a sigma bond. Here's another example. This molecule is known commonly as acetylene, the very compound used in acetylene welding torches and in Keith Richards' hangover medication. Uh, <laughs> that was a joke. Anyway, I once detonated a balloon containing acetylene gas just for fun. It turned into a large black fireball, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> the point is, the carbon-carbon triple bond in this molecule, as well as all triple bonds, contain one sigma bond and two pi bonds. Each carbon-hydrogen bond in the molecule is a single bond and is therefore a sigma bond. The final point I wish to make here is this. Sigma bonds are stronger than pi bonds. However, a triple bond is overall stronger than a double bond because it has one sigma and two pi bonds. By the same logic, a double bond is a little stronger than a single bond because it contains one sigma and a pi bond. Typically, the stronger the bond, the shorter it is in length. Hence, single bonds are longer than double bonds, which are longer than triple bonds. So that brings us to a lecture question. Which of the following has the shortest carbon-carbon bond length? A, B, C, or none of the above? <laughs> 